Okay, the, the next speaker would be uh, Susan Denke, um, who is the Instruct Hub coordinator since the inception of Instruct as an, as an ERIC, the European Research Infrastructure Consortium. And previously, Susan has been involved in the formation and development of the research, uh, Instruct Research Infrastructure from its inception in 2006. Um, and Susan also coordinates the RFIS project and currently chairs the Life Sciences Research Infrastructure Strategy Group. And Susan will present to us the Weavers project. Thank you for joining, Susan. Okay, thank you very much, uh, everybody, for inviting me to, to give this talk about RIVIS. RIVIS is one of the core organizers of this symposium. Uh, and so we felt it was just um, nice to be able to give you a little bit of a snapshot of what the project is about and, and how it's contributing to uh, establishing collaborations between Europe and Latin America. So the project is called RIVIS because it's, it's aimed at improving the visibility of research infrastructures. Uh, and this symposium particularly highlights the, the exchange of uh, information and uh, objective of uh, expanding visibility of research infrastructures into the Latin American geographical region. So the research infrastructures that are involved in the RIVIS project, there are 12 in all uh, in a partnership that brings together uh, infrastructures in various areas. Mostly they are uh, related to the life sciences, but they span areas uh, from marine biology to plant phenotyping, uh, to some environmental services, uh, and also involvement of uh, social sciences as well. And each of these research infrastructures have a number of uh, organizations in partnership uh, themselves. And so collectively, uh, this consortium uh, of RIVs brings together about 350 network partners around Europe uh, and represent uh, organizations in, in 31 of those European countries. So it's a very broad consortium uh, altogether. And we're hoping to develop some tools uh, to help visibility of all of those areas uh, in the research infrastructure landscape in Europe um, and expand them into new communities uh, around the world. Uh, and because it's such a broad consortium, although our own um, group in RIVIS is, is rather skewed towards the life sciences, we do have many intersections and interactions and connections with those research infrastructures also in the digital physical sciences and energy sectors as well. And, and we aim to represent them uh, as well. So why do we need our IVIS? Uh, well, I think um, uh, Inma has already made it quite clear that, that uh, although the EU research infrastructures are well known within Europe, uh, the knowledge of them is not so great outside of Europe. Uh, and yet the research infrastructures can offer a huge range of benefits, uh, both for individual scientists, for research organizations, uh, and for industries as well. Uh, and uh, we would benefit greatly from having much better understanding of the benefits uh, of these research infrastructures in new, new communities. Um, the way that you achieve visibility um, has not been uh, great in the past. I mean, we have even struggled with this within Europe to, to get very broad knowledge of the research infrastructures within Europe. Uh, and so uh, uh, extending that knowledge to outside of Europe poses specific challenges. And so the idea within RIVIS is to establish uh, new methods and tools to enable uh, information to be transferred efficiently and correctly into new areas, taking account of the specific um, situations in, in those uh, areas where we can um, make uh, information as clear as possible. And in order to do this, we've, we've uh, developed a number of, of tools so that we can guide the communication channel, channels in such a way 
uh, that we optimize that sort of in information transfer. Um, so one of the things that we have uh, done is to develop a communications toolkit. Um, and this has been developed so that it's, it's useful for any area of science or research um, and can be used uh, across the board and it's, it's freely available. Uh, and at the bottom of the slide there, um, if you look at the uh, link, the internet link, all of the resources that this project has developed is available through our website and uh, anybody can use them. So this symposium uh, in Latin America is one of three major symposia that, that RIV is, is organizing during the, the duration of the project. The first was in South Africa, uh, and that was very successful. We were rather unfortunate, I suppose, in that the, the project started in 2019 and had just a year of, um, of working before the um, coronavirus pandemic hit. And we had already planned three major symposia to be hosted in each of the regional areas uh, that we were interested in, in working with. Uh, and we wanted those to be in-person meetings where we could truly make personal connections in those areas. Um, but since the pandemic, we haven't been able to do that. And so the South African symposium was the first of our virtual symposia. Um, but that nevertheless was very successful. And the Latin America Symposium, this one is the second in, uh, in the, the, the three that we have planned. Um, and we have a much bigger audience for this meeting and, and we hope that this will be very useful for everybody concerned uh, and will also be a success. Um, the third one coming up will be in Australia in October of this year and that too will be virtual. So um, it's, it's in some ways disappointing that we weren't able to be there with you in person to, to make these personal connections, but nevertheless, it's, it's very good to be here with you and, and I hope that you'll find this, this symposium very useful. So the sorts of communications that we've, we've um, facilitated uh, we've compiled a, uh, an extensive range of resources, as I said before, um, to be made available to, to both European research infrastructures and also the communities uh, into which we are, we are interested in, in working. Um, and the idea is to uh, provide very clear messages. Uh, sometimes not easy to do that when you're working with a broad range of uh, people uh, in different fields of expertise uh, to get clarity of message across. And, and uh, we have built in certain um, resources so that you can accommodate uh, differences in languages, uh, but also other barriers that may uh, come up from time to time uh, related to um, uh, geographical, political, or uh, funding um, barriers or, or uh, limitations that, that might pertain. So the toolkit uh, is, is uh, on the RIVIS uh, website and I would invite you to have a look if you are interested in um, establishing uh, some information from your own region to be sent back into the EU uh, area. And likewise, we're very interested in helping to, to establish clear information channels in both directions. Um, so in, in developing the communication uh, uh, kit, we, we pulled together a number of communication staff, uh, experts in, in their fields. Uh, to help us uh, derive the, the sorts of uh, tools and services that would be helpful in this way. And since we've uh, developed and launched the kit, we've um, kept this uh, communication dialogue going between the experts um, by establishing uh, a Slack channel, a dedicated Slack channel, where these communication teams can keep in regular contact 
and uh, share experiences and ideas and uh, new resources that might be added to the toolkit or used in a different, slightly different way. And, and this has been very useful and we've had uh, a number of people join uh, the, the Slack um, working team such that currently there's about 250 people who contribute to that uh, on a regular basis. And we've also um, helped uh, set up some communications workshops um, to, to work on uh, enhancing communication and visibility um, designed exclusively for some research infrastructures or communities. Um, and we've, we've done this to enhance uh, skills and capabilities in social media and marketing. Um, and it, this is very important. Social media is becoming uh, an increasingly important uh, channel through which information can be uh, made available, um, not only for the researchers, but for policymakers and funding bodies and funders as well. Um, so there are a number of uh, collaboration tools that are available through the portals um, for European research infrastructures. Um, there are some links there. I do uh, encourage you to have a look at those and, uh, and see what's out there to, to help in this, in this uh, area. Uh, before going into the, each of these symposia in depth, um, we, we did some research and uh, we developed some white papers that um, describe um, the situation in, in the region in which we are um, uh, making contacts. So the white papers uh, were um, uh, based on research in those areas to look at uh, what, what collaborations had already been established that were successful, um, what the lessons uh, learnt uh, had been from those people who had established collaborations, and uh, where there were challenges or uh, issues that needed to be addressed uh, in each of the, the areas uh, before we established a communication strategy to get um, European research infrastructure information across to the, the relevant communities. And also whether there were particular requirements uh, for funders and policymakers in those regions um, for information that they needed to understand and how we would uh, get that across to them. So there's quite a bit of uh, work ahead of the actual symposia uh, and we hope that this has been useful in targeting the right sort of information into the communities that, that we're uh, addressing. Um, and we've tried to do uh, this information transfer in a number of ways, including uh, at various uh, meetings and conferences uh, and uh, when, when it was possible to do so, um, to attend uh, these in person and actually talk to people on the ground. So uh, I didn't want to take up too much of your time because I think we're slightly behind time. So um, uh, I hope that this is this has um, been useful in just introducing RIVIS, uh, and I, I equally hope that this meeting will be helpful uh, in establishing uh, some information about the research infrastructures in Europe and possible connections that can be made in Latin American uh, countries. Um, and um, uh, I, I hope that you have a, a good meeting. Uh, if you have any questions that, that RIVs can help you with, then please don't uh, hesitate to put something in the chat and somebody will, will get back to you uh, quite quickly. So thank you very much again and um, have a nice meeting. Thank you, Susan, for your presentation.